Today, I just wanted to talk to you about something that isn't that well discussed. It's called chronic kidney disease. And you may not have heard of it, but did you know that in the UK alone, about 3.5 million people suffer with chronic kidney disease. And if it's left without being treated, it can have really serious consequences. So let's find out a little bit more about chronic kidney disease. Okay, so first of all, what are the kidneys? Well, they are two bean-shaped organs, about the size of a clenched fist, that sit on your back, just below the ribs. And they do a very important job. So they filter out the waste and the excess water from your blood to make urine. And they're very busy. So they usually filter out about 180 litres of blood a day. They also balance out salts and minerals, including sodium, potassium, phosphate. Um, so they've got a really important job. Okay, so that's what the kidneys do. So what happens when they don't work? Well, there are two different sorts of um, kidney problems. There is what we call acute kidney injury. That sounds quite nice, doesn't it, acute? But it, what that means is it's something that's come on very quickly and typically won't last long. So this might be, for example, if you've had a nasty um, blood infection, then you might get acute kidney injury. And this typically lasts um, hours or days. And that is in comparison to chronic kidney disease. And what we mean by chronic, that doesn't mean that how severe it is. That is about the time that it takes to be there. So chronic kidney disease is we're talking about months or years. So this is a gradual deterioration in the kidney function. And this is really common. Possibly one in 10, I've read, so some studies show, because a lot of people don't even know they've got chronic kidney disease because it doesn't have any symptoms. So what causes chronic kidney disease? Well, it's often a combination of things, but the most common causes are high blood pressure, diabetes, which can be type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, and ageing. Not much you can do about that one. But actually, um, over 75 year olds, about half of them will have some degree of chronic kidney disease. And then there's lots of other reasons why your kidneys might fail. Or, or at least not work as well as they should. There can be something called glomerulonephritis, where there's a disease within the tiny filters within the kidney. You can have a genetic condition, which is passed down through the families, called polycystic kidney disease. Um, you can have it because you've had lots of recurrent infections or blockages of the kidneys. So lots of different reasons, but as I said, the most common reasons are the high blood pressure, the diabetes, and they're just getting older. Okay, so how do you even know if you've got chronic kidney disease? As I've mentioned, it's very common and uh, it can lead to quite severe consequences. So how are you gonna find out? Well, the difficulty is if you've got kind of the more mild end of chronic kidney disease and there are no symptoms. So you won't know, you might just find out when you have a blood test done for possibly something else or a urine test. Um, when it gets a bit more severe, so uh, that can be things like you're feeling really exhausted all the time, you're feeling short of breath, um, you feel sick, you might have swollen ankles and swollen feet and a puffy face. Those are some of the signs we might see if that kidney disease has developed to um, a worse stage. We split it into five stages, one being the most mild form of kidney disease and then five being what we would call like end stage renal failure and that is when at least 90% of the kidney has stopped functioning as it should do and that's when you have to start thinking about things like dialysis or even a kidney transplant. Okay, so we know what the symptoms are, how common it is, and some of the causes. So how are we actually gonna treat it? Well, most of chronic kidney disease is looked after in primary care by GPs like me um, and other clinical associates. And what we need to focus on, because we cannot cure chronic kidney disease, but what we can do is stop it getting worse. Because we do know that as it gets worse, there are consequences and complications that we want to avoid. So by doing that, we need to focus on those causes of that chronic kidney disease. So we need to make sure your blood pressure is really well controlled. We'll often give you a medication for this, typically an ACE inhibitor, something perhaps like Ramipril, or an angiotensin receptor blocker, something like the Sartan. But we need to make sure you've got really good control of your blood pressure. And we need to think about your blood sugar control if you have diabetes. So we need to make sure your blood sugar is really well controlled um, because again, that can make the kidneys worse. Um, at the moment, as it stands in the UK, uh, NICE, our guidance recommends that we give something called dapagliflozin because that protects the kidneys and helps bring your blood sugar down. In fact, it's so effective that you may be recommended to have that even if you haven't got diabetes. 
And then the other thing we need to think about is preventing you from getting something called cardiovascular disease. So that's when we're thinking about things like heart attacks and strokes. As I mentioned, high blood pressure is a cause of chronic kidney disease, but also chronic kidney disease makes your blood pressure worse. So it's a bit of a cycle. Um, in fact, you may have heard about Tina Turner. Um, she recently died, unfortunately, from her kidney disease. But actually, it was caused by her high blood pressure and her husband donated a kidney and she had a, a renal transplant, so a kidney transplant. But actually, that may not be what she died from because what we know is if you've got chronic kidney disease, you're 20 times more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than you are from kidney failure. So what we need to do is do everything we can to reduce your risks of that cardiovascular disease. So that's looking after your blood pressure and it's making lifestyle changes. What can you do to be healthier? Can you get to a good weight? Make sure you're not overweight. Don't drink too much alcohol. Um, try and reduce the salt in your diet and try and exercise. The kind of stuff you know that all together makes you healthier. That's gonna help your kidneys. It's gonna help your blood pressure. It's gonna reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. We're also gonna think about your cholesterol because again, that's what increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. So you might well be put on a statin. We may want to thin your blood a little bit to, again, to prevent that risk of heart attack and stroke. So you may be put on something like aspirin. As well as adding in medications, we also need to make sure there are some medications you're not taking. So some medications do damage the kidneys. That includes things like anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen. So if you take, best to not take that at all, actually. And be very wary about any herbal remedies, probably stay away. And also be careful about any protein supplements. All those things can potentially damage the kidneys further. But the, your doctors or your clinicians should look through your medications and they might need to make some tweaks and changes. Unfortunately for some people, no matter what they do or how they try, their kidney may end up getting worse and they may end up in that kind of stage five, that kind of end stage renal failure. And at this point, obviously be under the care of a kidney doctor, a specialist in the hospital, and you may have to go on dialysis. I'm not gonna go into that too much now, um, but that's where your blood has to be removed from your body and filtered and put back in because your kidneys aren't working. And then the other thing is you may end up having a kidney transplant, but there's a waiting list and six people die every week in the UK waiting for a kidney transplant. I hope that's been helpful. It's a bit of a whiz through, but I want to just give you a little bit of information. Um, you can obviously speak to your clinician if you've got more questions about this, but it may have answered some of your queries and given you a bit more things to think about. And have a look at my other YouTube videos. I've got lots on there that you may find interesting. One's on high blood pressure as well. So definitely watch that one. And pre-diabetes, you may find that useful too. Thanks so much for watching.